Five, three, two, one. Real life street stars, man. We got a whole situation in here, man. 1501 ENT in the building, man. The one and only Carl Crawford, man. God damn it, man. What's going on? Hey, man, for those that are deaf, dumb, stupid, been living on the rock, man. A lot of people know you from, from different things. Right, right. But, you know, we on the Real Life Street Stars. Um, Go and tell them, uh, tell them where you're from. Yeah, let's, let's go and go through that. Tell them where you're right. from. I'm from uh, Houston, Texas. Born and raised. Um, you know, it's about my first... Two years, I mean, first 17 years, <clears throat> right inside the hood, Fifth Ward, Harder Street, to be exact. And, uh, you know, play sports to kind of, you know, stay out of trouble and ended up uh, getting drafted for baseball out of high school. Signed a contract to go play baseball, played a, um, a long baseball career, you know, did my thing there and then jumped into the music business just to put everything in a nutshell, you know. I can. Go back over and tell you the details, what you want to know. Man, now I got it. Uh -huh. I actually worked for the Rangers Hawking Beer, you okay. know what I'm saying, for like 12 years. <laughs> yeah. And you used to be back there destroying it. Uh, and the, the one yeah. thing about baseball, there ain't a lot of black people in baseball. So right. when you see a black person in baseball, you fuck with them. So you was like right. one of my favorite players. But why you do us <laughs> like that, man? God damn. You know the Rangers? Yeah, you <laughs> were Every time I looked up. First off, I like playing there because it was Texas, you know what I'm saying? The ball fly there. So you got to understand. Every athlete that played baseball, you know, when they come to, to the Rangers, they can't wait to get there. Type shit. They like, man, this about, we get we hitting the home of the day, the ball fly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So y'all just happen to have one of those stadiums where we love to come. We know we're gonna get some home runs, triples, and all that. But it seemed, but it yeah, seemed like yeah. every time I seen you play, it was yeah. a home every yeah, time. Yeah. I'm like, damn, this nigga killing we us. Knew, now it was like they had a wind, a, a place where the wind kind of like blow. Oh, so awesome. And you would just be like, and backpack, you like, you know, you trying to do your regular yeah. shit, but then you take a couple of them swings. Yeah. Or, Man, let me try to go on just in case, you know. Bro, just destroy <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. Now, I do got to ask because, like, um, you know, in baseball, you're like one of the fastest niggas, like, just, just right. naturally. Why don't more black people play baseball? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just think at some point they just around the high school time. And, school, and I ask a lot of people when they seem to get weeded out or either quit or for whatever reason didn't even get a chance to play when you already got athletic ability that you know about. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like every athletic black person should go out for baseball no, and just stay. Not as long as you the, can, you know what I'm saying? Is it, is it for yeah, the check bro. or is it, I mean... Just because, like, it's a sport that, like, we eventually get, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got the ability to do it. Just take a little time to work at it, you know? So, and, and then it gets boring at times. So, we get used to excitement from basketball to football, running. Baseball get, get boring sometimes. And, you know, some people can deal with it, some people can't. Now, I don't want to put your business out there, but weren't you one of the people that got a $250 million contract? Yeah, I didn't get $250 okay, million. Okay, you got it. A career I made around okay, that money. Okay, you got a stupid-ass contract. No, I, right. Yeah, I did, but you know, uh, 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 yeah, I did. I, you know, I worked hard for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I stayed focused my first nine years. I played hard, made all-star games, did everything I was supposed to do. And But I'm a runner, so I ended up getting hurt a lot. You know, at some point in time, as a runner, you're going to break down. So that's kind of what happened with me. Injuries started to come, and I had to retire. Now, definitely, I want to ask you, uh, as far as at the time that you got into the league, um, about what percentage of the league would you say players were black, like actually? Black? Yeah, you know. Uh, I'm going to say probably about, it was always like about 8 or 9%. Eight or nine. Yeah, yeah it's man. It's mad low, bro. You got to think, man, like, okay, look at the the catcher's position. There's not yeah. one black catcher in the league. Hell you no. mean to tell me out of all these niggas around here and black yeah. people around, it's not right. one person in the whole America? And that the, can catch just, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not one. Not so it's one. like you got to really look at stuff like that, bro. Like I tell my kid, hey, man, go be a catcher, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because they, you know, you just going, you know, but uh, it's, it's just crazy stuff. You look at stuff like that, you just be like, then you mean to tell me there's not one black catcher in the world? You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One, <laughs> and, and, hey, nah. and one of the things I want to highlight is, you know, when, when the Rangers finally made it to where they actually made it to the uh, World Series, they had to go through, you know, Tampa Bay. Yep. And y'all damn near became our rival because it was like, yeah, we, we was, kept playing. In order yeah. for us to get there, it was y'all in the Rangers every yeah, goddamn man. time, bro. Like, out of that pitching, y'all had that, uh, y'all had a good lineup of hitters at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had Josh yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, Josh. Josh. Me, me, and, and, Josh, Josh me, me and Josh Hamilton Cruz. got drafted together out of high school. Oh, the oh damn, for yeah. real? Oh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah, both, 1999. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the first pick, I was the second pick. So we was actually teammates all through the minor leagues. Oh, that's hard. And then he had his situation and I went on up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, man, but the, so outside looking in, when you seen us, the debacle, because, you know, for us, we watching the motherfucking World Series, 
Yeah. We hit the home run, nigga. We think it's over with, and bam, they niggas come they back. Do and, it, man. Like, hey, look, look, that listen, was the craziest listen, shit. Listen, it's always to the last play with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can't never just it's be that one time that you just think that it's over, and it's just that one little thing. You know what I'm saying? Remember, like it's kind of like what happened with the Cubs. Remember the one yeah. little, yeah. one little thing. It just, it just, it just left, bro. Because everybody in the outfield is like, uh. Damn, everybody know it should have been three outs. So nah. The black picture came so, in, we knew yeah, it was man, over so with. So it's like you, everybody panicking now that you know it was already, we was about to be out the field, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So now it's getting real and everybody tightening up and now, oh, a mistake, you know what I'm saying? Then a one mistake leads to another mistake. And right. next thing you know, shit, you coming back, you know? Yeah. Now you. It's very, it's already noticeable you got an eye for talent. Have you ever thought about doing any scouting or going out and like putting people in certain places in position where they could get in these sports and do that thing? Cause like you said, it's no. Yeah, yeah I, um, you know what happened? My whole plan all along was for me to kind of just get in the music business and do something besides baseball. Cause I've been in it, you know, I've been playing every day since I was eight years old, you know? So I wanted to do something different, but I always knew my son was coming. So um, with that being said, <laughs> he's developing the way, you know, we expected him to. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. Really? So now that I'm going to get more back involved in baseball, you guys will see me. I'll probably, yeah. you'll probably see me in a uniform or something. Yeah, but yeah. I can't do it full time because of the thing. But you know what I'm saying? Once that happens, I'm going to be, I'm going to kind of slow my way back and I'll just be back and forth like the, like yeah. the big, like the big yeah. business people do it. So are you still good though? We know you're not playing professional, but are you still good? Can you still? I don't play? know. I'm finna train with my son. <laughs> then he's going to find out. He beat all my time, but I just tell him, I just, that's because I ain't raced nobody that could beat me, you know? So right. until you, until somebody beats you, you ain't going to never know how fast you is. Keep it real. So, as yeah. a dad, we all dads, man. Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a dad, does that feel good that your son is playing baseball? Uh, and you nah, can actually feel real show good. It. Like it, it's like late to me. Like, I don't know how some, People probably like like you had a situation where you say, oh, you got might be jealous of your son or something. Like I don't understand because when I see it, I'm just like, shit, that's all yeah, me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he jeans, can do as good as he wants. Yeah, he yeah. can do as good as he wants. I need him to do three times better than me, actually, so I can no brag plan. about it. You know what I'm saying? I need to be able to brag with all the other athletes. We all had like like this year. It was a it was a high school all American mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Five guys I played with in the big leagues was there with their oh. sons. So, you know, That's to the end, we all gonna compete to the end. <laughs> Big facts, and uh, I'm curious even, so uh, like you said, you got into the hip hop, uh, yeah. the music business, but like you said, ba uh, basketball and football was always more towards the hip hop world. Baseball never right. really had that hip hop element. Man, like, were you listen, like sitting there listen, playing man, for listen, 17 years? Let like, me tell you, man, listen, I played all three sports in high school. Yeah. I was good at all of them. Everything cool. Baseball come, baseball season come. I gotta put these tight pants on and walk down the hallway. Turn the swag down. Cold school. Turn the swag down. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn the swag down. That alone will make some niggas quit. You no, see what I'm saying? Really, no, for real. Really. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I just happened to play since I was young, and I just knew I had an uncle. He played in the minor leagues too. So he kept, kept me, you like, like, focused. But had I just not been a nigga like, like who was into baseball, yeah. that moment, I would think, man, y'all take this uniform. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, one of, one of the things I think that hurts baseball is, bro, when you take your queen out there, it'd be hot as shit, bro. Especially when you, the when, Rangers, you do what? when you take your girl out there, they be in the sun. Well, at least the Rangers used to have it where it wasn't Man, no gold. Listen. It'd be hot as a motherfucker. Hey, listen, they get so mad about that hair getting puffy. Boy, no, it's going to poof. They done just put all that when it got it done. You know what I'm saying? I tell you, don't feel bad. We're going to get like that anyway. No you know fast. what I'm saying? So sure. That, what, what, that what, section be crucial. Huh? That friends and family section? Yeah, it is. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. They just get puffy. They... Man. Oh, and what was the worst stadium you played in? Was it the Green Monster or anything like that? The worst stadium? Yeah. As far as just trying to knock the hoe out. Because you was on Boston. I was at Boston. Yeah, that probably... That's one... You know what I'm saying? Because it's such an old stadium. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just so old. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, bro, it's baseball it, baseball. Like, Chicago used to be, like, one of the worst ones because... It was so small. That probably was like the worst one, but now they done upgraded yeah, it, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. The Dodgers, I heard, was a bad one. Yeah. And then they made theirs good, like everybody upgrading their stuff. So yeah. if I was to say, you know, Oakland was Oakland was a little shaky. Oh yeah, nah, for shaky. real. Now, now, one of the things that happened while I was actually personally working at uh, Hawking Beer, somebody was running to catch a, uh, a foul ball and, and fell over the rail at the Ranger Stadium and fell and- And then uh, hurt themselves. And, yeah. and killed themselves oh. in front of everybody. Like. 
Oh, when he fell down. He fell, yeah. I think I remember that. It was Josh Hamilton. He threw, I him, think up, I he threw a ball yeah. and he went over the rail and his son was right there and he fell over the rail. Oh, and yeah. like he just died. Yeah. I think it fucked Josh Hamilton all the way up. Like, yeah. like um Especially but, coming from what he went through to get back to tight. the major leagues to have that. It's like, damn, yeah, like he I, can't get catch a break. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, nah, I mean, I was rooting for Josh, man. Like I said, we had got drafted together. And shoot, man, he just went through a lot. It was really impressive to see him get back to the major leagues like right, that. Nah, big yeah. facts, big facts. Now, you you retire, um, and is fifteen on one already kind of in your brain as far as what you want to do? Yep, um, it was already it was already brewing. You know what I'm saying? I could t- I always tell people the story because it's just funny how everything shaped up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, it was around about 2008, 2009. I'm getting ready to leave Tampa, and um, Paul Wall reaches out to me and Shut tells me I'm gonna be in Tampa. You know what I'm saying? It's like, let's hang out. I'm like, cool, let's do it. So. He comes over to my house and he, um, well, let me go back a story just before that part real quick, a little bit before that to yeah. tell you, like, I had always been in Houston, the scene, 20, yeah. 21 yeah, years old. So I'm seeing all this stuff. Yeah. I want to engage with it, but nobody has let me, you know how the yeah, rap game is? Like, oh, nah, bro, you look too fresh. Yeah. You got too much going on. Yeah. Still for me. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So years of just getting, I can't, I can't crack nobody. Nobody circle. Yeah. I got the money. I got the, you know what I'm saying? I got everything that I thought you're supposed to have to be with the cool dudes yeah. or whatever they was calling themselves. You know, I was cool too, but I just liked the rap music because I'm from Houston. I wanted to hang with them. I wanted to be around it and see. Yeah, the culture. But they, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let me in how they spoke, you know, Not how I wanted people. to get in, which is cool, I understand. So I was always wanting to see how I can like get in on my own. Mm. And then one day, you know, so I was telling my brother about, you know, my ideas. He could tell you this too. And, um, um, like get back to the story with Paul Wall coming, yeah. and he's you know he walks through my door, and behind him walks a guy named Travis. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, okay. No, nah, not Travis Scott. His name is Travis Ferris, actually. Oh, uh, T. Ferris. Yes. Okay. So I have been listening to the songs right now. I knew this kid because we played elementary. We played <laughs> little league baseball together. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never knew him as T. Ferris. You know what I'm talking okay. about? I always knew Travis. There's but you knew Paul Wall used to like always shout him out in the songs. So that's what I'm trying to tell okay. you. So I, I'm sitting here, I rap the stuff. T. Ferris <laughs> signed a check. He walk in, I said, boy, what you doing here? He was like, you up trap. And then I said, wait, don't tell me you the T. Ferris. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, you the T. Ferris? He been talking about it in the song? Yeah. So I'm just like, my mind is like, yeah, like I'm ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this how I'm getting in right here because we played little league ball together in this all, this all black baseball league from age eight to the 14, number black kids, you know what I'm saying? So we had this all fun. Anybody that I meet from back there, even today, I'm still like cool with them and I'll speak with them or I'll just be how I was with him. So that's how he got in, that's how I got in with him because I knew that I was gonna be able to come to him and say, bro, come on, let's do this. You know, we come from this back here, it's our love. And that's what happened. Soon as I saw him walk through the door, my mind, I already knew what I was gonna have him do. This was in like 2008, 2009. Yeah. Soon as they left the house, I called my brother. I said, hey man, I, I got how I'm finna get in here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was like, how? I said, T. Ferris just walked in my house. I mean, I said, Paul Wall just walked in my house with, with T. Ferris, yeah. Travis. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, from the back park. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm finna make him run the label. I'm finna make it watch. Whenever I get into the music business, for real, because at that time, you know, I was wanting to get in it. But I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to do it while I was playing. I seen too many people try to put one foot in, one foot out. Even yes. like like my boys, even playing some guys, other baseball players that played, they was trying to do it while they was playing. And I'm yeah. looking at them just, and they all like, hey, see, don't get in the music business. And I'm like, you know, just because you messed up, don't mean I'm messed up. And that, and you know when you tell an athlete not to do something, they gonna do it because it's a challenge. You know, that's what we all thrive on challenges. Because. So. Um, yeah, he told me that. I told him that, and um, shit, I knew it. I knew immediately what I was gonna do with his ass. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely. The, the, yeah. the, the fifteen on one name. Yeah. Uh, what does that come from? Uh, it's it's my address that you know what I'm saying in Fifth Ward off Hardy Street, where I was you know my first house where I was you know raised there pretty much fifteen on one. You know what I'm saying that's where all my cousins used to be. Like we all yeah, grew yeah. up right there at some point of time. That helped my whole family touch that one spot. It's still there too as well yeah, with yeah. my cousins still staying there. So. You know, it was just symbolic for me to kind of go back where I started from and see if I can start over and, 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 and blow up again. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I did it one time. I want to go right back from scratch, start over again. And look, nobody don't got an excuse to tell me what they can't do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So take, take me through the process of like, um, 
just when you got it, you, you got T. Ferris. Who was like some of the first people you start to, to try to develop on the label? Man, these, these was a lot of local cats around. First, it was like one of my little nephews that, uh, that uh, you know, he was trying to get into rapping. And, um, but, uh, and then another local guy in my neighborhood. But, of course, they, you know, we kept going to jail and stuff like that. So I couldn't do that no more. So I started uh, dealing with a couple of more little local people that I really didn't know too well that T. Ferris brought in. And, uh, you know, kind of was just learning a bit, learning, learning from here. I mean, learning the little things I needed to know and getting started, really. How, how long would you say that process was from the time that you were just going through locals to when you discovered Make the Stay? Probably like a year, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I really didn't rush, you know what I'm saying? Like I really, I, I just got the paperwork done. And then for like a, a year, like six day more, I was just going around the city kind of popping up a little mixed shows, looking, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to like, uh, you know, do my due diligence around town, see, see what's what. And I didn't want to rush, you know what I'm saying? I knew building the foundation was the most important part. How did you learn to weed out who actually wanted to do music versus people who just wanted it for like money or just for some quick clout? Man, it's easy because the workers, you know what I'm saying? You could tell by the work they putting in, what they doing, you know, if they complaining, they turning in stuff on time, you know. So, you know, um, man, all this gimme, gimme, gimme stuff, I kind of, everybody know I, I made the mistake of kind of just doing that when I first got in the game. So then I had to learn that, you know, I can't just spoil everybody. They got to work for something because it seemed like when I give them stuff, it's like, you know, and then the first time you say no, you the bad person. You know what I'm saying? And you, I think I went through that a lot. So, and you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, it's kind of hard, right, because I see, they see you and they see the success you have. Yeah. And then they kind of look at the artists like, man, they don't really have nothing, but they ain't did shit either. Exactly. They ain't did nothing to have nothing. Right. You just giving them an opportunity. How do you combat that kind of like you being I, you? Yeah, and because I, I told them, you, if y'all would have saw me early on, you would have saw that what I did. You know, having everybody by me close and do that. That went absolutely wrong for me. You know what I'm saying? Look what it... Look what they got me. Yeah. You know, look what they, look what they got me going through. Yeah. Sure. Motherfucker, they still think I own them after uh, after you did all that stuff for them. So I just took a different approach. I'm looking at how like the new little videos are and stuff. They all start out with nothing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like that's part of building their fan base. You know what I'm saying? You come in with everything already. I don't think they want to support you as much because why would they want to do that if you right. already got everything? Right. Okay. So I have to tell my artists, hey, look, at least earn your own first chain. Now you know what I'm saying? Whenever you do that. Then yeah, we can add all that other stuff on, but you're gonna work for something now. You ain't right. just finna. And if you tired of people saying, "Hey, why you don't got this?" But well, then do something about it, because you know what I'm talking about. You can have the opportunities to be seen, to be an entertainer, to be you know to turn up pretty much. You got the whole turn up kit. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. No, facts, facts, and I, you know, I gotta touch on it because, um, you know, like you said, for what you're going through. Uh, Houston was going through like a dry spell at you know exactly. after the switch house. There. It, was, it was going through like a real dry hey, man, spell. Listen. I'm sitting back watching this as I'm retired. I told you I thought about this in 2009, 2008. Yeah. I, I retired in 2016. So as every year go by, I'm yeah. saying, damn, nobody still don't want it. Right. Yeah. Nobody still ain't. You my so brother, hey, look. Money, bro. Why, you you uh, ain't think about like, fuck, I'm just. Uh. Nah, because I'm from Houston. I understand the value of just having it. You know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Just having it. Like in a nutshell, like that. I understood it. That's why so many people shoot for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm telling my brother, because, you know, he was hanging, you know, he be with. Slim and all his partners and stuff. Yeah. And I'm saying, damn, they ain't developing nobody. They ain't making no new nothing. It ain't nothing happening. I said, I'm, I'm sitting to myself acting like I'm upset. But I'm saying, man, just give me a few more years. Man. <laughs> hey, give me a few more years. I'm going to jump out there and I'm going to go get it. Because they, I'm on the outside of Houston looking in. Yeah. So it's different because yeah. you can, I don't care who, if you from Houston, you tell anybody you from Houston, you out of town. It's like they just, I don't know what it is, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't think they realized and understood that. So I was like, man, I'm finna put Houston in a jar and I'm finna sell it to everybody. Well, and, man, you know, we up in Dallas and it was, uh, I was talking to my guys, you know, we already kind of doing this real life street stars, street stars thing. And I hear, you know, this, you know, you know, ain't nobody fucking with Megan. Your nigga ain't even fucking me naked. I'm like, yeah. I, I hear this freestyle. I'm like, who is this motherfucker? Like, who man, is that's this? what I'm saying. At the time of that freestyle, um, uh, which I think is called Stolly or something like that. Yeah. Were you already uh, in business with uh, making no, the time? No, when she made the Stella Freestyle, she had the Stella Freestyle before, before she came to. That's how I saw it. That's, that's what I yeah, saw. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I try yeah, to put these niggas yeah, on. Yeah, like, bro, yeah, this yeah. might be next right here. Nah, listen, man. Listen, I'm 
see, that's what I'm saying. Me being from Houston, I knew the elements, right? So, uh, meaning that, you know, we had girl rappers before, but we never had girl rappers who want to, like, dance and do all that type of stuff. Right. The girl rappers where we was from was like, want to be like the dudes. Right. They're going to be hard. They ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 but then no. when I, I, I was like, yo, who? They, they rapping in they bought, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. said, this different, you know what this I'm different. saying? And she, I was like, T, yo, we need to go get this right here. You know what I'm right. saying? Just how it happened like that. Now, Tick Barrels will probably take all the credit. You know, they take all the, they don't want to tell me that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he know that's what happened. I'm, I had Instagram for one week, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, because I had just retired from baseball. I was so pro much of a private person right. that I didn't want that type of stuff. I canceled my uh, uh, IG that the Dodgers made for me at the time. And they, um, and um, I told him, a guy, a guy that we knew was like, bro, you cannot be in the music business. But I know IG. Man, look, I know you don't want to make it. Just let me make your phone. He literally took my phone, made the IG real quick for me, real quick, followed a few people. You know what I'm saying? And when he followed, you know, one of these uh, stripper girls that he had on here, yeah. um, shit, that's where I saw that. Yeah. He, he posted it off the page. Damn. Yeah. Shout out to the strippers, man. Y'all yeah. play for another song, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the strippers. So I'm sitting there like, man, what is this? You know, I'm stolen. I, I ain't only had Instagram for like a week by the time. No more than 100 followers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what was going on. I, yeah. I, I got a question, man. Cause uh, was what was the first song that just took off? Was it Big Old Freak? Yeah. Okay, that was a hit song. I don't know what it did on the billboards or anything like that. Yeah. But what does a hit song do for a company that's an upcoming label? Like, tell me what that does for. It just label. brings so much notoriety and like people want to work with you more, man. And you just be certified as a music executive that people can, you know, trust, bring good music and. You know what I'm saying? Make stuff. That's all it was for me. Yeah. You know, I was more intrigued with the executive role because yeah. playing baseball, like we consider like the private school, the sports right, school. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Everything is always low key, and you know what I'm saying? Stuff That's like stuff. that behind the scene. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, how I was gonna be. ask how yeah. many people were surprised at just like your personality out of baseball because we don't like you say baseball players. We don't really you don't know see them. You, you don't, really you don't get to know their personality. They yeah. all look dry. You know right, what I'm saying? Nobody right. looks like they just oozing with. Flavor or nothing. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I seen Bebe. He had the 15 on one chain uh, for yeah. a minute. What? Yeah, he he was one of our early ambassadors that believed early. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I try to reward everybody that jumped off the porch for us. You know what there I'm you saying? Go. So, um, so he always been there for us, even through these little times. Don't choose no size or nothing like that. That's because right. we all came to him at one time. You know what I'm saying? He believed go. in what we was doing early on. So we, you know, so you gotta right, take care of those type of people. Now, as you said, uh, with Big Old Freak rising, you you know the fifteen one as a label is rising as well because you know now you know the name is getting out there. Right. Uh, Baby had said something like early on when you know when he was doing his deals with Lil Wayne and everything that he apologized recently because he's like, man, I just didn't know I didn't know the business like you know I was learning as we were going. Go. Yeah, so right. how about you for you as the business of you know uh, contracts and running all. The, are you yeah, learning man. as you going? Cause only shit, man. I'm getting a 101. With... <laughs> I'm at the university. Of... Hey, I'm at the I'm at the university. Of... You learn the business, man. Yeah, every day, yeah. every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. What is the hardest? What is the hardest thing you've had to deal with as far as artists and attitudes? Man, <laughs> and this is for anybody, <laughs> any artist. Just, basically, man, it's just the, like. The entitlement, you know what I'm saying? That like the man, I did it by myself. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I'm talking yeah. about? I was gonna be this anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like I was already this. You know what I'm saying? I just be yeah. like, man, goddamn, dog. Like I, I'm, it's okay. I'm not afraid to say that I needed you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Why you wanna? Why y'all make it seem like my side always got to get cut out? You know what I'm saying? It's I, like I, it's a team effort, right? Yeah, bro. It's like everybody do it. You know what I'm saying? It's a team effort. Nobody can do this by themselves. It's impossible. Stop saying that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't do nothing by yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you was popping already, you wouldn't have to come over here to me. You know what I'm talking about? You didn't, clearly don't like what I do sometimes, so you wouldn't have volunteered to come to somewhere you really don't like. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Shit. Now you had mentioned something on our partner, uh, Lil Mike's podcast, Mouth of the South, man. Uh, you where you said, man, one thing that you could have did differently was um, been more hands on. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's see, one thing you didn't know you, you wanted see, to give. See, the coming, space. see, coming as an athlete, you know what I'm saying. Then I was young, so young in my twenties with all this stuff. You just my thing is laser focus, focus on baseball. Focus. So you get used to just telling people to do everything for you. Right, right, yeah. So over time, you get used to this. Hey, do every, do this for me, do that for me, and you know you kind of treat everything the same way. 
Definitely. So for me, um, I got caught up in just telling somebody to do everything for me. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Because I, I thought I trusted them and you know, they took advantage of that. And um, you know, that's what, that was the big mistake I made. You know what I'm saying? Because this person was able to stay in between and cause confusion. And you know, to make sure that his situation was right, position himself to be where he's at right now and to like make it look like I'm the bad person. You see what I'm saying? So had I been more hands on, had I listened to a few more people that was giving me warning signs, I would have known to just, hey, you know, keep be more hands on, stay in, into everything, every little thing. You need to know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, I'm with everything. I got to know everything. I go crazy if I don't right, know right, the right. slightest little thing. You see what I'm saying? And it's PTS from that <laughs> shit right there. Yeah. So, so did the Rock Nation deal with Meg? Was that just a total blind side? You just didn't see yeah, that coming I, out? Yeah, total, total blind side. You know what I'm talking about? Like straight, just. How does that happen man. though? Like, how, how did that happen? It happens because you have a manager <clears throat> and an artist that's colluding together and they talk to them amongst each other. And they, they like planning that the whole thing out. They planning how they finna like get away from me. Like if they, they just scheming the whole time. And meanwhile, and they pointing out all the stuff you're not doing, the little right. stuff that you're not doing. That me as a new person don't even know I'm supposed to do. I'm taking all this guy direction. Imagine taking direction from somebody and the whole time they just rolling you this way just so they can like mess, mess you up that way. Yeah, you know. Now, you came to Dallas. Right. You, you picked up a talent by the name of Erica Banks. Now we love, we know and love Erica Banks because she's like, she was at the time one of the hardest females in the city. Still is one of the hardest females in the city. Uh, how did you hear about her? How did that? How did that? Happen? How did, Man, listen, like I'm, I'm so much. Was just once I got realizing that the, this is where I had to find my stuff. I just always was seeing her, so I had really saw her. You know what I'm saying? When I was still with Megan, but um. Of course, girls don't like, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, could tell she was, she had a little similar, she had a little similarity, but you know what I'm saying? I knew it was enough to, if I was to just try to go get another artist, Megan would probably be like acting weird about it. You know what I'm saying? You know how they act. So um, I left it alone, but then we, um, situation came up and we separated. Now I needed another female artist and the one that I had, had just, I just knew that wasn't the artist for 1501 at the time. <laughs> Um, I just happened to be seeing her again, and I said, I always think that stuff like that was like not on accident, you know what I'm saying? So I saw it again, and she's doing this diss track to this girl in Dallas, and I'm like, oh shit, I think I need, I think that's what I need right hey, there. <laughs> hey, now, um, well, did you get any Houston hate from the Dallas from the Dallas pick? Was there any? Because you know. Dallas and Houston always had like this little kind of rap rival. Nah, it, it, it wasn't no hate at first because Houston is so arrogant, right? It, it, right. But they didn't think it was nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they like, okay, come on in, you know, do whatever. Yeah, we love Miss Erica Banks. And I and I like I say, little stuff like that, I know. So little elements that I know how to, you know, play Houston. Right. I know in that moment they was gonna say, oh, he's just trying to get a little another one real quick. You know what I'm saying? They didn't think nothing of it. But I was in such focus. I was. I probably was one of the most focused times I've ever been. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I made it look like I made it look like I was just. Mad. You know what I'm talking about? Right. But boy, when I tell you behind the scenes, we was focused <laughs> and we pushed that shit. Cause you gotta understand, it was a corona, but nobody right. couldn't do no shows, nothing. 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 So how we blow or how we break an artist during corona? Right. Shit, we got to work. That's what happened. So, so I do got to ask <laughs> because I remember when uh, when she popped with Busted, right? Right. A lot of people was trying to say, ah, he just trying to recreate another Meg The Stallion. What, what is your take to, to those people that had that? All that? I'm saying is, you ain't gonna ask Atlantic. They got two, three girls right. on their label. Right. You, Warner got two people. Everybody got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got two, three girls on their label. What I'm supposed to just stop because yeah. it's one? Right. Like, right, right. y'all don't make no sense. Right. Any girl I sign, y'all say she sound like Megan, so I don't got no choice <laughs> but to just listen to the shit. But at the end of the day, this is what labels do. They sign artists. Like, yeah. get it, get over it. I'm gonna sign other female artists. I'm gonna sign other male artists. Yep. Like, you know, shoot. How does it, how does it feel to make two female, have you, has anybody ever done that? Make two female artists pop on the same label? Hey, uh, platinum two. Two platinum, two platinum, platinum, I two platinum that, recorders. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't so know. this is what I'm saying. After time, I always said they're going to look back at what I did and say, because the, of how fast it happened. 
You right. said go make another one, and a year later it was there. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like that's so really fast. Did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so fast. I mean, granted, she didn't get all the awards you got, but for me to go get another plaque from another artist, right. that was big for me. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So and with less than a year. That's crazy. Yeah. Listen, yeah. And, um, so is it just easier to work with women? Like, what is it? Because everybody makes it seem like women are more divas, but it's like you made that shit happen like back to back. <laughs> because they like, you know, you know, they want to. I, I like a lot of times, I don't with the controversies that y'all see with the women. They like to blame me and say I do. I really don't do none of that. These women, girls, they have their own mind. They do what they want to do. Now, when they decide that's where they going with it, yeah, I've got to back my artists, whatever. So then I get caught up in, oh, you making all this controversy and stuff. But at the end of the day, when I got to back the artist, I'm going to back the artist. And a lot of times, that's what kind of make everybody know them. And, you know, it's the controversy. You know what I'm saying? You, you we engage in it. And, hey, it come back to us too at times, you know? But you just got to know that this is how it's going to go. <laughs> so, what is the protocol when you got a female rapping harder than the niggas on your label? Right. Protocol to tell them niggas they better rap harder. Yeah, better rap. Their ass gonna be getting <laughs> loved by a girl nigga. and shit. Everybody gonna see it. You know what I'm saying? So you better come hard because you know me. I don't got no favoritism, right. especially when I see you know the girls coming because it's like a little wave coming and shit. It's like I'm literally at the forefront of it. So yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so so us you know us real life street star. We would think about making BBL records, man. You think there's a formula to making the girls pop, man? You think huh? the BBL records? Well, what they doing is they going to go get their body done. They got the ghostwriters for them. You know, they, they getting a the look for them. Do you, I they, mean, you, know, you they, think it can happen like, just like that? I mean, you know, they could try. They trying it a lot, but. There's no ugly female rapper now, bro. It's weird. Nah, they going to get their body done. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Bad, they going to get they, everything done. That's it. But it kind of, it's really because the image really is everything. It's really like so important that they have to go do it. You know, but it teaches on. Hey, if, you, if it makes you more money, if it makes you more money, Shit, go handle your business, man. Now, yeah. I, got, I got to ask you this, man, because as a man that pop made two female artists pop, right? I know you got to have a flood of women and you just women in your inbox just trying to get on. Artists, yeah. There's like, a lot of them, you know what, what is the wildest shit a woman has approached you to try to get on with? Because, you know, females get a little aggressive at times. Nah, like. man, they just, they just, they don't really do no wild stuff. They just kind of send their music, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I think they be thinking I'm, you know what I'm saying, playing with them. Because they'll send some hard, some heat in, and I'll be like, yo, what is it? And you can't hear from them or something like that. But it always, man, it's always like they just send the music every day. I have to go through it. I really do be going through it. I know when I go live, they be thinking, oh, you don't be reading this. I say, but you know what I'm saying? That's how I find y'all. I go, I go through it. Now, it's big facts. Uh, you know, I seen what happens when you put money behind a new artist. Yeah. It's like, it seems to be uh, a lot of artists be talented. They have the, the little bit of following. But if they could get behind the label, the label put a little bit more money to the visual and to the, yeah. to the marketing campaign, the clothing, you could pretty much, you could pop. Yeah. Um, how much do you feel like you need to invest into a certain artist when you get them on the label? Like, personally, like you feel like, this is just for other CEOs that's trying to do this. Oh, uh, man, it, it, it all varies on to like where you at. You know what I'm saying? If you already got something going on, you know what I'm saying? Like if you buzzing already, your budget might, you, it might take probably about 200, 150 to 200,000 to get you going. You know what I'm saying? Or if you early on, you might have like 50,000 just to kind of get a person going, like for us, just to kind of see if the street's messing with them or something like that. You know, it's, it's different little ways you can do stuff, you know? So I'll just say, like they say, man, just have three to, three to what, 300,000, just go get 300,000 and be ready to go. Now, is it, is it a different formula to pushing a female artist versus a male artist, do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so because, um, you know, um, pretty much they different as far as like, like how they have to approach what they got to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like guys just can do shows after show. Yeah. Girls got a one show. They got this whole make, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude so get ready like, and shit. 10 yeah, minutes, you know 15 what I'm weeks. So Ugh. it's like, but um, that's, all, that's all to be with the girls, man. Yeah. But, but keep it real, because you, you, um, you did a hub, right? And you brought um, the roster you had through at the time, and you had Stunner Bam in it. Man, we, shit, we've been jamming that song nonstop. Which one? Rock yeah. Out? Uh, rock Out? Uh, yeah. Rock Out? Oh, man, that was, uh, yeah. it, but, yeah. but I be feeling like, like the niggas be going hard, but it's like way, it feels like it's way harder to get them noticed than it is. Like, it seems like when a woman has a song that's hard, it just yeah, flows it goes straight with, to the top. Because, I mean, that woman probably... She probably look good, you know what I'm saying? Like the look, you know, that's why I yeah, come nah. back to the image. You know what really? I'm saying? It kind of just skips. 
a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it seems <laughs> like you find all single cylinders um, from Erica Banks. Uh, you got Marie, you know, for the for, for, right, for, well, for the that's ladies, she used to be she used to be a rapper. Yeah, she turned rapper. her to a, a singer. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, because I just feel like with the wave of girls coming, like right now, this little twist with the singing. You know, you hearing the slow music on the radio more from yeah. the Summer Walkers and Summer Walkers, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I just went to a Summer Walker concert, boy. I was like, who? I can see my artists doing the same yeah, no, thing. Same shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, so, then, yeah. you got, then you got the young, you know, you got uh, D Raw, you got uh, Smoothie, to yeah. where you kind of found on all cylinders as far yeah. as all, you know, trying to get everybody going, man. It's like it's just kind of molding and developing all the all the seeds, all planting, kind of growing a little bit. Everybody kind of coming into their own at the right time, and sh I'm just trying to be here and see, it, you know, see how, it grow. I would say, how are you, like, when it comes to even seeing new new talent, new artists? Do you have to like hold yourself back from trying to sign another motherfucker? Like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Like right now, I'll just be looking. I'm already like, hey man, there's already a couple of motherfuckers I'm looking at. You know what I'm talking about? But I tell them, hey man, look, we just gonna keep the train going because that's how we gonna always operate. We gotta be on top of the next thing that's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now in Dallas, uh, bloggers do something out here called a gatekeeper list. Right. And they detail all the people who- I saw that list. Kyle's oh. a little static. Right. <laughs> now, I don't, was he on the list? I can't he remember. Was on, uh, he was on the list. Okay, yeah. so do you feel like you are a gatekeeper, or is that even the title that you want? Is that anything? Yeah, I never looked at myself be? as a gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? But you know, if that means help people get to the, you know, to their dreams, then yeah, I guess yeah. that's what I'm doing. Because every single artist, you know what I'm saying? Like they already know I'm not like, I, you know, I ain't saying there's nothing bad to being signed to a rapper and like that. But for me, I already been who I am. You know, I just want to be in this role. So that means I'm not trying to like. You have the chance to be. Oh, you can be, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, you might not get that other places. Man, now I know it done been a situation where y'all done been in the studio. It'd be like, hey man, go on, come get on the song, bro. Like, just go on. They see always what you trying get. to, <laughs> they always, they always trying to like play with me. Cause y'all yeah. go in there just teasing sometimes. Yeah, so is there a like verse a out there? Nah, I just got my tags right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, ain't no, it, ain't no, it ain't no verse yet, man. But they be like, man, go on, get on the mic. And I'm like, nah, bro, I ain't never rapping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big, you know big, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's your man. I know you got uh, eight boys tucked off. Even Michael Watts hopped on the track, you know what I'm saying? Would you do it if it was chopped and screwed? I mean, I don't know, man. I, 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 I have to do it. Talk to him. They be rapping her in the house all day long, man. They be thinking I'm finna come grab the mic. I just be like, nah, I'm just talking. Yeah, for real. I want to give you a chance to respond, man, to um to the current situation that's going on right now, man, as far as... uh. You know, your name is being brought back up by, you know, people like academics and stuff like that as far as explaining what's going on with the Meg situation. Right. And even she uh, had words for you. Yeah. Um, I want to give you a chance to respond to that because what it, when people look at Meg, you know, she's big and bigger than life, but right. they be trying to find out what's, who are you and, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always lose that PR battle right there. So I don't really care. <laughs> That's why I say what I say and I'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you know what I'm saying, but you know. This last thing with the cokehead thing, I said I must right. have really pissed off. You know, you must have been mad this time. But you don't sue me twice, and I you finally got sued. So you don't like that shit. You don't feel good to get sued. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you go off on the whole rant that TMZ posted. I didn't even. I was asleep. I woke up about six in the evening that day because I was tired. And um, you went live though. You went live. I, I watched. Uh, did, did you wake up to a phone call or did you wake I up woke to up see it? Text messages. Bro, all this shit. So I'm like, nigga. damn. They like, they like, yo, Megan, going off on you, fool. What's up? I'm like, man, what? So you like, my. Hey, bro, I'm gonna put the on. But doesn't does this kind of help? Because if you want TMZ, you know, the, no, it all, it all helps. It all, right. you know, it's all good. But you know, it's like the pub, the public opinion. You know, you you talking about pill popper. I'm. Coke here. I ain't never did coke a fucking day in my life. Yeah, shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, man, where's this coming from? You so mad as hell. I must have hit a nerve. So when I put, the, you know, you fucked your friends, nigga, and shit like that, that was just a response to let you know, like, shit, this is where we going with it, because we can go with it. I'm, I've been an open book my whole life anyway. I done got into so much shit before this that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't telling nobody nothing that's finna just make them stop fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? But I can come and say some shit that it don't nobody know about you. You know what I'm saying? And shit, if this what we if we, if we if this if we snitching now, that's what we doing. See. Now, <laughs> does it ever get disheartening? Cause it's like you been genuine, you want right. to help people. All you've done is help people, even to your own detriment. And then when you get them to where they're supposed to be, 
it's like a slap in the face. Does it ever make you feel like, what? damn, I'm going to be in a, a, a sports announcer or some shit? Right. Like, yeah, I mean, it make you get discouraged sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? Being a person that, like, don't got the athlete mentality, quitting is just something that, you know, uh, irritates you even more than the pain you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And so I just I just look at it as like, hey, man, I'm just going to... If you're going through something this tough, it's got to be something good at the end, you know? So I just want to try to stick it through, because that's what I would tell somebody else to do. Yeah. Now you, so... so. Right now, man, can you detail, like, I know we've been pushing uh, Smoothie Poppy lately, you know what I'm saying? That's, what I, that's who I've been seeing a lot, you know what I'm saying? He got the song Chad Butler. Yep. Everybody fuck with it. The song's a hit, you know what I'm yep. saying? For you, um, when do you know when to push that button? Like, when you say, all right, this, nah, this is one, this you know, one, I one. See, when I see just that excitement, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing everybody know every word to Chad Butler, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm seeing everywhere we go, it's a, he getting a reaction, you know what I'm talking about? I'm seeing the numbers on social media just doing what they supposed to do. Everything is, is 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 doing what it's supposed to do. You might um, know the gig. Another you know, one called back, hey, man. I need it though. I hey. need my first. I, it's like it's like having that first son. You know what right, I'm talking right, about? Right. I can't. They keep telling me I can't do it. You know what I'm right. talking about? So I I just really want to pop like a male artist because right. um, shit, man. I'm, I'm tired of this old. He he only giving the girls a chance. Type shit. Yeah. <laughs> now let me ask you this. I was thinking about this. Texas labels. You got rap a lot, and is it is it? It's got to be 15 to one now, right? Like right. it's not that many. Texas labels that just made, you know, the, the things that happened at, uh, do you ever sit back and think about that? Like, damn, I'm doing some legendary shit. No, nah, not while I'm in the middle of it, because I'm just, I just feel like I'm just still at such the early stages of what I'm trying to do that I don't want to sit back and think about being with the greats right now. I still got a lot of work to do, you know what I'm saying? We just trying to get this Megan the Stallion stuff over with so we can move on as a company and a label, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, you know, they just hell bent on trying to keep a nigga down. It's like, shit, I got to, you know, Fighting crowd for everything, but once that's over with, you know, I'm looking to just move even further, further on down the line, man, and just keep on growing and getting better. So, uh, is the roster set? We still looking? What? What is? What is I, don't know, I mean, it's situation. always would be like I always have a roster, and if I stumble across something, then I just gotta, you know what I'm saying? Like, like with Smoothie, Smoothie was in my studio months, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just hanging out, he been there, me walking around. I was going right past him, you know, hey, what's up, Bob? I'm got, you know what I'm saying? And one day, he nigga recording, I, oh, man. <laughs> what's that? You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like, kind of like what happened. I, I just told, I walked out, I was like, damn, smoothie, smoothie hard, huh? You know what I'm saying? Then from then on, it was like, shit, we need to go do this, you know? So how is it like going on the road and taking it, this music to different places and seeing the response? How does that feel? I remember just him at the hub, him performing, nigga. Yeah. It was turnt. Like, I mean, he had the whole crowd. And I know that had to make you feel like, damn. Nah, it was because, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing like getting that natural, that natural reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, just motherfuckers just naturally fucking with it. You ain't have to force nothing, you know? So you see him, he's a good sportsman. He out there in the middle of the crowd, you know what I'm saying? Just giving it his all. And hey, man, that's all you can ask for, really. So, man. For the rest of the year and beyond, tell us what Carl Crawford's plans are. You know what I'm saying? Right. You already got two successful acts. Right. You popping another one. That's going to work. You got d Raw. You got Marie. You got a lot of talent on the roster. Um, what do you personally have going on? What's the rest of the 1501 um, looking like? Really, we just finna keep putting our music out. Yeah, we got Stunner Bam finna drop his project uh, April 14, 15, Wait, like that. Know. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Smoothie. He got some bangers on his seat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got Smoothie Project we're going to put out. You know what I'm saying? Right before the summer. So, man, we just gonna keep putting our music in. And, and, are, you and fighting, huh? are you the one fighting all this talent? Are you a and this shit? Man, what you think, man? I do it all, man. I'm a one-stop shop, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before I do it all. here, one more question. Who who do you have to pull to the side the most? Like, hey, man, come on, man, chill out, man. Who they? Who, I said, who, who, what are you, which one of your artists you gotta pull to the side the most? Like, hey, man, chill out, man. We just. We just. <laughs> What you mean, chill out like what? Like, 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 like Whether like it be what? on the hoes, the drinks, anything like. Man, shit, y'all, man. Like, <laughs> my, but D. Raw give us the blues, man. Hey, man, man. They don't hey. Turk, they don't huh. D. Raw yeah. give us the blues, yeah. man. That boy get to drinking, having a couple of sips, man. We like. Pfft. He look like he fuck around. Y'all just get be lost. What the fuck, did he? Yeah. Man, that nigga, he gonna fall asleep in the most awkward positions. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just be out yeah. of there, yo. Yeah. Hey, you got any shout outs? Oh uh, man, I just want to shout out to my whole 1501 staff that works hard behind the scene that y'all don't get to see. You know what I'm saying? 
And, uh, you know, we just want to keep building and growing and uh, making our brand well, uh, worldwide. And if anybody want to tap with, with 1501 to get in touch with any of your artists that you have available, how would they do that? Um, just, just come to my DM, 1501. I mean, 1501certifiedent.com. I mean, I.com. Uh, 1501 Certified Entertainment on IG. Hey, man, Carl Crawford, we just want to thank you for sitting down with us, man. It was a legendary experience, man. Yeah. You really putting on for the Texas, so, man, the whole Texas. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moving.